hearts and thank you for connecting. Um, today the colour is red, of course, for Valentine's Day um, this weekend. And um, I hope that you have a nice weekend. I think we are connected and I think we are live. Yeah, okay, so I can continue, I think. Um, yeah, so it's very difficult to learn English. I understand it's very, very difficult to learn English and I hope... Um, you have patience and I hope that it's uh, you have a good clear idea to learn English because in reality it's very very difficult especially to understand um, native people and native fluent speakers so my idea at the moment is to try to help I understand the class maybe is difficult maybe it's a high level maybe it's difficult to understand but my idea is to try to help a little and try to explain especially at the moment with the pandemic and the majority of people it's necessary to stay at home so it's a good opportunity to try to teach and to try to help and um, fingers crossed we can continue in this way I have a new location so it's finally possible to teach a little from here and um, I stopped working in And it was just very difficult to continue working and um, so now it's a little opportunity to try to help and hopefully we can continue in this way and hopefully the classes help you I hope there's no problem with the internet and the technology or interruptions because always it's possible to have problems I think yesterday with the video there was a little delay a little problem with the video yesterday maybe with the connection but hopefully today it's it's okay so that's my idea to try to help everything is for free at the end and um, if you want to make a contribution or a little support for me it's possible for me it would be a great help and a great uh, benefit I'll show you the details here so this is at the end if you want and it's optional so it's possible by Bizoom by PayPal and it's a good option if you want okay also I have my dog of course you can see you can hear my dog so that's him at the moment barking and very very loud so I hope there's uh, you can still he hear me and everything is okay and um, yeah so that's the situation everything is free and I'm happy to teach for free but if you want to support me it's definitely uh, a help and maybe in the future I will need your help and your support okay so I'll share my screen with you and here is the in, is the agenda for today. So first we have the introduction document and every day it's very very important to give the introduction to the technical vocabulary and the concepts in grammar because during the class I refer to the technical concepts a lot and it's necessary to understand at the beginning the general idea and the general concept of the technical vocabulary okay after the introduction I have two options the first option is the article from Sao Paulo maybe to continue a little with the article about Sao Paulo from the National Geographic that's the first option and the second option is the video of the telenovela in English a telenovela is a soap and like yesterday and the day before we showed a video with the telenovela in English from Ireland and also an analysis of the vocabulary and the expressions and that's a second option and a second possibility for today the other two options are the list of phrasal verbs and phrasal verbs are very important concept and now in the introduction I will explain the concept of phrasal verbs and the second possibility are an idioms list and they are very important as well for speaking practice it is possible during the class if you want to participate in the class if you want to practice your speaking for five minutes very relaxed very um, easy very simple just to practice it's possible with zoom you can connect with the ID with the meeting ID and the passcode um, you can request to join and to participate and I can practice speaking with you for five minutes in front of the class with everybody uh, watching it's a very good idea and I'm waiting for the first brave valiente the very brave person to, that wants to practice 
for me it's a good idea and I think it's it, it's more interesting for you as well so that's an option with zoom you can connect when you want and here I have the window so when you contact me I can see your name here okay and then we can start um so that's this the plan for today okay so maybe it's a little heavy but normally English is difficult and the classes sometimes are difficult but I hope that you uh, enjoy a little and that everything is is fine and okay okay so the first section that is very there's three sections in my opinion that are very important the use of English is the first section and the second section is the tenses so the first section is use of English the second section is the uh, for tenses or times that we speak in English and the final section is just grammar ideas and different grammar uh, topics and other grammar uh, concepts okay so the first category use of English this is very important in relation to accents of course in Dublin we have a little it's possible to have a little accent in other parts of Ireland it's possible uh, strong accents definitely in England you have strong accents in the north of England the south of England in Scotland you have accents Wales and um, Belfast Australia New Zealand United States very very different accents and this is a big part to understand English it's maybe the biggest part to, to understand different people very very hard okay um, the next idea is the idea of phrasal verbs so basically the concept of a phrasal verb is a verb in English plus the preposition but the significance is possible a double significance or a second significance so the first significance is possible literal but the second significance is maybe second and different from the first significance and this is tricky and it's hard and we have a lot of phrasal verbs in English a lot and we use them all the time okay so we use phrasal verbs every moment every day and they are a big part to understand English okay especially fluent conversation the next category are idioms so idioms are like expressions or phrases hechas in Espanol and also they are very common and very very important in everyday conversation every moment we use a lot of uh, idioms okay expressions with friends with family and for me this area is a big big area especially if you want to understand local conversation for example if you are from Bulgaria and you live in London if you are from Brazil and you live in Ireland this area is very important to understand local conversation okay conversation in general is important to practice so I recommend that you try to speak 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 in English with a friend or with somebody it is very important to do and also pronunciation is important and this is just a little list for pronunciation particularly for Spanish speakers that sometimes is problematic for example the Y the L L yellow J jacket cash SH register with the G jet J jet engine fragile jealousy yearly chicken and kitchen okay so that's just a little example but pronunciation is important and during the class I try to identify and help a little with pronunciation the next area are the different tenses and the different times in English so if you speak Portuguese if you speak Spanish if you speak Indonesian if you speak Vietnam Vietnamese it doesn't matter because every language is necessary to understand the concept of the time do you speak in the present do you speak in the past Do you speak in the future for example with me I understand Spanish y puedo hablar en español I can speak Spanish but I have a big difficulty to speak in the past and the future so it's very important in every language French German it's very important the different time or the different tenses okay so in English we have a few different concepts we have the simple tense so there's the present simple one action that's in the present okay one's action simple past simple one action that's completed in the past and the future simple one action that will be completed in the future okay so for example the verb to look I look is the present the past normally regular ed I looked and the future I will look and there's a second possibility for the future I am going to look 
so I will look and I am going to look that's two possibilities for the future but we have a lot of irregular verbs in the past and this is a big area irregular verbs in the past for example to eat ate to do did so it's important the concept of irregular verbs and that is a very big area as well the next concept is for the continuous so in English we have the present continuous one action that you are doing continuously in the present and the structure is the subject I you he she we subject we have the extra verb to be I am eating is the gerund ing okay so that's the structure I am eating my dinner I am talking I am meeting I am running that's the present continuous the past continuous is a similar concept but in the past a continuous action and the future continuous is a similar concept in the future except I will be eating I will be going I will be meeting and the past I was eating I was speaking I was going okay that's the concept of the simple and the continuous the next concept is the perfect and we have two or three times or tenses for the perfect the first one is the present perfect and the present perfect is a period in the past that's related and relevant to the present but it's finished and the construction is the subject the extra verb have and the participle of the verb an example I have spoken to my friend and the information so it's finished but the information is relevant to now that's the present perfect the past perfect is the period in the past before usually before another action in the past simple so the construction is I subject I you he she we extra verb have in the past had and then the participle spoken so I had spoken to my friend when my brother contacted me so that's the past simple so normally the past perfect is the period in the past before this uh, past simple action usually okay there is a possibility for the future perfect I will have spoken that's possible as well a little more advanced that's the simple the continuous and the perfect the next idea is just a simple idea of the infinitive okay so basically in English the infinitive is with the verb to to go to eat to drink to have to talk that's the foundation and the base of the verb and normally it's to to eat to go to drink infinitive okay and then the next concept is the conditional the conditional for the theory in the book is a little heavy and a little difficult with the theory in the book and it requires a lot of study and a lot of concentration for the conditional but in reality it's a little more flexible and basically it's connected to the word if so for example if it rains today I will go to the city if I spoke to my friend yesterday I would have mentioned something in particular so basically it's connected to if and the different time or tenses connected and the theory we have the zero conditional the first conditional second conditional third conditional and mixed conditional so the theory is a little advanced and a little heavy but in reality basically it's connected to if okay in general then the other concept for me that is important is the active and the passive and basically the active is the typical structure subject verb object that's the active for example I kick the ball okay and then the passive is to change the position so the ball introduce an extra verb to be the ball is depending if it's the present or the past was the participle kicked by me okay so in this case I kick the ball is the present the ball is kicked by me that's an important concept and I think in other languages you have the concept of the passive also so that is important especially in exams if you are preparing an exam it's a good idea to use a range of vocabulary and a range of different tenses it's very impressive and in reality we use different tenses a lot in conversation so it is very important especially when you are learning English a lot of native fluent speakers a lot of people do not understand the concepts in grammar so don't worry because in reality a lot of native speakers or fluent speakers do not are not aware of a phrasal verb we are not aware of an idiom we are not aware of different tenses in general a lot of people so 
um, when you learn a language I think it's important just to understand the structures okay the next concepts are just other general concepts for grammar so the concept of the noun or the substantive because during the class I speak a lot about nouns adjectives adverbs modal verbs so it's necessary now just to show you a little a noun is basically a person a place or a thing for example house car bottle phone uh, television substantive noun every substantive normally it's necessary article is it a television or the television okay so a television is the indefinite article and the television is the definite article so there are two articles and there's a little exception when the word when the noun begins with a vowel a e i o u the general rule is the article the indefinite article begin with a n okay so here you can see the example an apple because apple is the noun that begins with a vowel and because of this the rule in general is necessary an the other exception is a house or the house you can see here okay so that is the article and the substantive the next concept is related to nouns and substantives countable and uncountable is it possible to count the substantive is it possible to count the noun or impossible for example water can you count water one water two waters three waters in reality no because we count a glass of water a bottle of water a liter of water they're the measurements but water it's impossible to count chocolate it's impossible to count money it's impossible to count air it's impossible to count with money we count euro so the currency is countable so there is a concept between countable and uncountable and that is very important particularly in relation to how much and how many so how much is related to uncountable how much water how much money how much time how much chocolate and how many is related to countable how many houses how many people how many books okay so that is very important here you can see and that is key to the um, to the class I think we're connected with the internet I just want to double check that everything is okay um, yes we're okay perfect sorry I just wanted to double check with the connection so how much and how many is important in relation to the concept of countable and uncountable the next idea is for adjectives so in English we have adjectives and the adjective basically connects to the noun so the substantive the house the car it's necessary adjective big car uh, red house okay so that's important with the adjective and the substantive in other languages I think the position is different okay in other languages I think the adjective is after the noun but in English the adjective is generally before the noun okay so yeah I think we have a little problem with the connection but you can see here because normally I connect to my mobile phone but I hope we're okay and um, fingers crossed there's no problem with the disconnection the next concept is for adverb and the adverb basically describes the verb okay so the adverb is describing the verb and normally the suffix or the ending is ly okay so here you can see quickly slowly softly um, and they're typically the adverbs for the connecting to the verb okay so that is important okay we're back connected I think so hopefully there was no disconnection for you then we have the concept of the modal verb okay so modal verbs are very common in English and they are very important as well basically this is the list of modal verbs the first one is can and generally it's related to ability I can play the piano I can jump uh, a building so it's related to ability I can the next three are very similar could may and might and usually it's for possibility I could go to the cinema I might go to the cinema I may go to the cinema it's a possibility it's an option and they are very similar but may and might are probably just a little bit more polite that's the only difference really between could may and might in general okay shall a very good question yesterday shall is a common used commonly used I think yes it is quite common but it is quite polite and it is important to understand shall shall basically means should and will 
So shall we go to the cinema is a question. Will we go to the cinema or should we go to the cinema? Should is also in relation to advice or recommendation. So I make a recommendation to you. It's necessary. You should visit the restaurant. You should talk to your friend. You should go to the party. It's my recommendation or my advice. Okay, that's typical for should. And ought to is practically the same, just a little bit more formal. So ought to is the same as should, but a little bit more polite and a little more formal. Okay, must is obligation. So you must do this. It's obligation. You have no choice. We have two possibilities, must and have to. The rule after the modal verb, the next verb is the infinitive, but we eliminate to. So after the modal verb, the next verb is the infinitive, to eat, to go, to drink, but the rule, it's necessary to eliminate to. And this is a common, common, common error. Very obvious and very frequent. So it's so important that after the modal verb, the majority of the time you eliminate to. The exception is probably have to or ought to, okay? Prepositions are also very, very important in English. Here we have a little example of prepositions, but we have in general a list of maybe 150 prepositions. And basically it's connected to the position or the direction or the movement. For example, direction or movement or location. I am in the room. The computer is on the table. Okay, the cat is under the table, beside the table, in front of the table, over the table, below the table. We have lots of prepositions and basically they are connected to position and movement. For example, speak. I speak to you. Okay, so prepositions are probably a really, really um, fundamental area for you to really understand English very, very well. Okay, so pay attention in the future to prepositions because they help a lot to understand. The difference between another and other and the other. So basically another before a substantive is singular, another day, another week, another year, singular, and other in general is for plural, other days, other weeks, other years. That's the basic difference between another and other. There is a possibility the other when you have a choice or a selection of two, th two things. Do you want this one or the other one? So it is possible the other for singular when you have a choice or a selection of two things. There is another possibility, the others with the plural, which means the group of people. Do you want to go to the party with us or do you want to go to the party with the others? Okay, so that's another possibility that we probably need to be aware of. Questions, how do you construct the question is very important. In general, it's the affirmative with do. That's the general construction of the question. So it's the affirmative, you want, you like, you go with do at the beginning, which is makes the question. The second possibility is to invert the sentence. So for example, you like chocolate, and the question is, do you like chocolate? But for the modal, you can drive, but can you drive? So it's possible to, to invert, and also the use of the verb do. That's the general construction of the question. Suffixes and prefixes are very important as well. When you study English, it's a very interesting idea to be aware of the suffix and the prefix in relation to helping you understand if it's a noun, adjective, verb, adverb. For example, ly suffix normally is the adverb. able suffix normally is the adjective. Ize normally is a verb in the suffix. For example, realize. Okay, and ance for the suffix is normally a substantive. Importance, for example. Okay, and then the negative. Is irregular in English for example impossible and unbelievable so we have two or three uh, typical prefixes that are irregular for the negative okay linkers conjunctions they are of course important and we have some advanced linkers furthermore moreover however although and but that's a general collection but they are very important for sure okay and I think that's sufficient for the introduction. That's a long introduction today and hopefully it's okay. Writing is a completely different ability and if you want to practice your writing, you can send me some writing and I can try to correct it 
and if you give me permission in front of the class as well that would be a good help for everybody exam preparation is very important as well the Cambridge exams are very popular the IELTS exams are very popular and during the classes in the next weeks hopefully I can introduce some exercises to help you uh, just to be familiar with the exams okay so I think we're still connected to the internet and um, yeah that's good so I had a little worry that we were disconnected and I'm talking to myself that would be a nightmare that would be my worst case that I spend one hour two hours speaking 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 and we're disconnected that would be a disaster so that's why I'm a little anxious okay so that is the introduction and we can save this so now we have two options it's possible the video from the telenovela to analyze the video or it's possible the article from the Sao Paulo National Geographic I have a inclination I have a, a feeling to, to begin with the article from Sao Paulo because yesterday we began with the video from the telenovela so today we will begin with the article from Sao Paulo okay so for people who are new to the class I want to introduce this article is a typical uh, day a typical day in Sao Paulo okay and we began the article last week and today we are in the middle of the article so here is um, the position where we stopped yesterday and I want to continue with the next paragraph to practice pronunciation first and after pronunciation I will return to analyze the vocabulary and the important topics okay so this is the next paragraph and I will read first and then I will show you my notes okay so next head down to explore Jardine's neighborhood with its retail lined boulevards especially if you want to grab that unique gift for somebody special consider passing by Haviana's flagship store and going flip-flop crazy okay difficult head to Granado Febo to dive into a fragrant world of genuine Brazilian beauty products wrapped in vintage casings okay if you crave a bite of the most delicious cheese bread in town stop by Pau de Quejo Haddock Lobo and don't be afraid to let yourself go okay so sorry for my Portuguese pronunciation obviously not the best okay so here we have the analysis this is the important vocabulary and I want to explain some concepts okay so the first is the verb head okay so next after the afternoon after the morning next proximal okay head yes this is the head substantive the head but it's possible a verb in English to head and the significance is to go so today in the future I will head to the shop I will head to the cinema I will head to meet my friend maybe a little informal but the significance is to go I am heading to the cinema I am heading to the supermarket I am going to the su supermarket or the cinema very common in conversation very real and very very normal so it is important to head okay in relation to the verb in relation to sport and relation to football it's a second possibility to head the ball is physically to hit the ball with your head that's the second possibility in football but the general first possibility is to go to head to go and it's typical with the preposition to to head to okay for direction so you need specific preposition for direction head go to movement specific direction okay down is another preposition and head down to is a little more emphasis for direction because maybe the location of the area the location of the place is in a low position and probably this is the significance of down so go down to just an example of the importance of prepositions okay neighborhood so last week we spoke about this word a lot a neighbor is vecino in espanol so my house is here and my neighbor is here okay so this is my house and this is my neighbor in the USA in the United States the spelling is OR but in the United Kingdom it's uh, O U R okay so in the UK the spelling is different from the United States 
and in Ireland it's probably acceptable the two and it's flexible okay so here you can see the computer is not recognizing my uh, spelling because my computer settings for the dictionary is O in the United States but in um, the United Kingdom it's O U R that's the difference the next word that is important is the hood so a hood in Espanol is capucha for example my jacket and I have the hood so when it is raining it's necessary you have your hood okay and the concept of hood as a suffix at the end means it covers everything so the neighborhood is the area with all the neighbors inside so the hood covers all the area so this is my neighborhood because all the neighbors are contained or covered in this area that's the concept we have a few more words parenthood motherhood childhood and they are the same concept all the years you are a parent all the years you are a child all the years you are a mother that's motherhood childhood and parenthood okay so it is an important suffix to remember parenthood motherhood and childhood okay and for sure it's important okay so I'll make this a little bit bigger here you can see neighborhood with its retail so the first word is possession my re my boulevard your boulevard his boulevard her boulevard but because it's a city in english it's its in spanish and portuguese maybe you have a uh, masculine or feminine for a city possession but in english for a city it's necessary its boulevards okay and retail line this is an adjective so you see the line the hyphen that little line is the hyphen in English it's called a hyphen and it's possible to connect two words to have one significance with the hyphen okay and here we have retail and lined so line in relation to the boulevard and retail is like a shop so the boulevard the avenue the street has a lot of retail shops all in uh, along the boulevard that's the significance of retail line okay but a hyphen is this in English that's a hyphen and it's possible to connect two words with with a hyphen to make one word that's a structure okay okay so if you want to grab especially if you want to grab that unique gift so if is the conditional you is the subject the verb is to want so if you want another verb is to grab and to grab is important verb it's this action to grab physical it's a little negative a little physical grab and grab the ball grab the person a little negative but we use grab very frequently with coffee with sandwich with food so imagine you are on the street and you want to grab a coffee you want to grab a sandwich this has the significance you want to take the coffee very quickly or you want to take a sandwich take away very common in conversation to grab a coffee to grab a sandwich okay and here it's a gift to grab a gift so the significance is to buy or to purchase the gift very very quickly okay to grab a coffee and um, to grab a sandwich it means to take or to buy very very quickly a gift and a present are practically the same so a gift is like for Christmas you have a Christmas gift or a Christmas present or your birthday you have a birthday gift or a birthday present okay so gift and and present are practically the same very very similar there's two different verbs to gift and to present okay four so typical i have a present for you i have a gift for you that's the typical preposition with gift i have but the uh, the verb to have i have a gift for you i have a present for you for someone so it's possible someone or somebody in this case it's exactly the same no problem someone or somebody exactly the same in this case um, and it's always a typical question people ask me what is the difference between somebody and someone there's no real difference obviously body is just cuerpo and one is just a number but in reality it's exactly the same just one person somebody anybody okay and um, someone special okay so the next one is consider passing by so the preposition that is typical is pass by and yesterday we saw this phrasal verb as well so to pass by it has the significance of past or beside so in the car 
every day I pass by the restaurant, I pass by the cafe. The significance is I go past or I go beside, so to pass by. On the street, if you are walking on the street, it's possible to pass by another person. So it's really to pass. And by has just the significance, the location or the distance. So it's not really too significant, okay? Flagship. This is excellent vocabulary and excellent specific word. So store is the same as a shop, okay? So flagship store. A store has the significance of a shop in Espanol, tienda. Okay, we have two significances in English, a store or a shop. And there is another verb to store in English, okay? So to store is possible in your room. For example, my room, I have a lot of products, a lot of things in my room, and I want to organize my room. So it's necessary I store my things or my items in my room. It's like put the items in the position maybe for later, to use later. So to store is to keep for later. And that's the significance of a shop because imagine the shop, you have the products and you keep the products for somebody later to buy from you. So that's the real meaning of to store. Same with your computer. You can store information on your computer. You can store information on your telephone. So the word to store, the verb is connected to the shop, to the phone, to the internet all very important and the substantive is storage is important storage room storage space and in the shop or the store you have two possibilities you have the floor where people interact and you have the room in the back so the room in the back with the products is typically the store room okay that's another specific vocabulary for the shop you have the shop and the store room so the store room is typically in the back where you have all the products uh, protected okay so that's just more vocabulary the store room and here flagship okay so flag is bandera in espanol flag okay so the substantive is a flag bandera and a ship is like a boat or a barco in espanol a boat or a ship and it's a typical suffix in english so ship is typical suffix and it represents substantivo for example relationship Okay, so relationship, ship is a substantive and it usually represents, a, sorry, it's a suffix and it usually represents a substantive. So for example, relationship, um, premiership, there are a few more. So the suffix has the significance of a substantive and flagship store represents the principal store or the biggest store or the most important store. The best way to remember is in the military or the navy for the ships in the ocean you have the army in the ocean and you have the boats ready to attack so you have the formation so you have one boat all the boats in formation and the principal boat with the principal flag is at the front and i think that's the reason and the same connection for the significance of the shops so the flagship boat is the most important boat in the army and the flagship shop is the most principal most important or maybe the biggest main shop in uh, for the company for example H&M Zara the flagship shop is the principal shop on Grand Via or um, Grafton Street that's the concept okay going crazy so this structure to go crazy is very typical to go crazy is to be uh, very enthusiastic to be very animated to go crazy but it's possible with the substantive for example I love chocolate and on Friday night i always go chocolate crazy that has the significance every friday night i always eat a lot of chocolate so to go crazy is to be very animated very excited and to enjoy yourself flip-flop is very specific vocabulary so there is a verb to flip okay and to flip is typical with the pancake when you cook you flip the pancake okay or the egg you flip the egg okay so to flip is this action it's also possible to be very angry so if the person is very angry it's possible to say oh he or she flipped okay so that's one significance to flip and um, it's possible to be angry informal maybe and that's one possibility but it's very physical and literal as well to flip for example the pancake to flip the pancake okay and the second one 
to flop is the opposite so flip is usually up and flop is usually negative okay and the typical significance with to flop is with a business so if your business idea your business project flops it's a disaster it collapse okay so my career flopped my uh, project flopped my company flopped so the verb to flop is this action to go down okay so flip is up and flop is down okay and to flop is informal maybe the company flopped uh, collapsed um, failed okay failed fire in espanol but together juntos um, it's very interesting so together a flip-flop is the type of shoe at the beach or the swimming pool when you go to the swimming pool or the beach it's necessary for your feet the object for your feet is the flip-flop the product for your feet so it's possible a shoe a runner but a flip-flop is similar to a sandal so a sandal for your feet is maybe more concrete but the flip-flop is when your foot is in and you walk and that's the flip-flop it's the product for the feet so this expression to go flip-flop crazy has the significance maybe to buy a lot of flip-flops to really enjoy the experience of the shop particularly for the flip-flop okay so basically a flip-flop is a type of footwear okay the specific vocabulary is footwear for your for your feet typically at the beach or at the swimming pool that's the basic concept there is another possibility for your decision if you're making a decision and you flip-flop with your decision this has the significance that you constantly change your mind so you're flip-flopping you're you're not sure you're not certain you're flip-flopping okay so a bit interesting explanation the next verb is the same so head is to go remember head is to go and typical the preposition head to the next verb is to dive into okay and to dive into a fragrant world and that is important as well to dive into so in the swimming pool with your flip-flop it's always typical in the swimming pool that you dive into the pool so dive is this action okay so dive is when you enter the swimming pool and the preposition into is important for a direction because you dive in the pool and direction to the pool okay but it's also an expression in relation to other areas and other topics to enjoy for example game of thrones on netflix or the series today is friday and tonight i want to dive into netflix i want to really enjoy and to really enter and to really use the product so dive into has the significance to enter enthusiastically and to really enjoy so my dinner my dinner is prepared my dinner is ready i want to dive into my dinner to attack and to really enjoy my dessert my chocolate I want to dive into my chocolate really enjoy so that's a very good example of a phrasal verb yes it's possible litter okay so dive into has the significance to enjoy and a fragrant world of Brazilian beauty products wrapped in okay this is an important verb as well to wrap okay at Christmas with the presents at Christmas or the gift it's necessary to wrap envolver in Espanol to wrap when you are very cold and you go for a walk it's necessary to wrap up okay so to wrap up is to cover yourself with lots of layers capas in espanol so to wrap up is to cover okay and there is a phrase of it to wrap up is to stay warm and also in relation to the end of a meeting or when you finish a meeting it's possible to wrap up the meeting so you're negotiating your meeting and you want to wrap up the meeting you want to finish the meeting so to wrap up has the significance to stay warm and also to finish the meeting okay and in relation to the movies in Hollywood it's very typical to say that's a wrap and the significance is it's finished so that's a wrap with the director in the movies that's a wrap everything is finished you can wrap the product, wrap the movie, and send the movie. It's a wrap. It's finished. And the final typical example is in the restaurant or in the cafe. You want a wrap, a chicken wrap. And basically, it's the same concept because the chicken is in the middle. And you wrap the chicken with the bread. So a chicken wrap is the same concept. Okay, so wrap is very important. And here, 
products are wrapped in vintage casings so a case significance is like a cover my telephone has a case and the product has a particular casing okay so a case and a casing are practically the same <laughs> and in this context it's interesting the next verb is very common and very advanced and very important so if is the conditional if you is the subject crave is a verb and very very good uh, verb very interesting a bite is a substantive okay so two explanations the verb to crave is typical a desire and something that you want okay so you want something you desire something for example chocolate now i have a i crave chocolate i really 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 want chocolate i have an urge uh, for chocolate como en español urgencia i have an urge for chocolate i have a crave for chocolate coffee typical with coffee because it's addictive you are craving present continuous you are craving coffee you really really want okay and here if you really really want almost emergency almost urgency because it's addiction a bite so the verb is to bite and in espanol it's more there so typical the apple you bite this action to bite and the substantive is possible as well a bite so the verb is to bite and the substantive is a bite so if you want a bite of the cake a bite of the apple in this case a bite of the most delicious cheese bread so adjective delicious substantive is the bread the adjective is um, delicious and probably the two substantives are cheese bread together but here the article is the the definite article and it's comparative and superlative the most delicious so remember with the comparative you have adjective delicious more delicious the most delicious superlative okay in is the preposition for a town so this is the best restaurant in town this is the best bar in town so typical preposition for town is in town again stop by by has the significance beside so you're walking stop by like at or beside really it has the same significance as position or at in this case pow um quidido uh, oof very bad pronunciation of portuguese haddock lobo the next one the next two are very very important so afraid is the adjective and because it's the adjective it's necessary with the verb to be and this is a very confusing area for a lot of people so i want to explain and you need to be very very clear with this difference so afraid is the adjective and it's necessary with the verb to be i am afraid you are afraid okay adjective the substantive is different okay so the adjective is afraid to be afraid adjective but the substantive is to have fear okay and the fear or the noun is the substantive and my spelling sorry for my spelling my fingers are very very cold so to have fear that's the noun and then the verb is also to fear okay so i fear spiders i fear the dark i fear um spiders again but the verb is i am afraid of spiders so the difference the adjective i am afraid with the verb to be of spiders but the verb i fear spiders okay and then the uh, the verb is to fear as well okay so that's just important because a lot of people confuse the two and here it's the verb or it's the adjective afraid with the verb to be the next expression is very famous very typical in conversation very informal very very normal to let has the significance of to permit so i let you speak i permit you speak i let you go the rule after the verb to let we have the next verb in the infinitive but we eliminate to the same rule with the modal so for you remember the rule with the modal the next verb we eliminate to it's the same rule with let so let somebody have let you speak so we eliminate to that's the important rule and the error not very strong error but it is an error to let you to speak to let you to go that's the error okay and here the verb is go in the infinitive but because it's let we have the rule to eliminate to myself yourself himself herself ourselves reflexive pronoun another pronoun so the expression to let yourself go is to really 
two possibilities to really relax so tonight is friday night and i want to let myself go i want to enjoy myself i want to not think about work i want to really relax so to really relax is to let yourself go that's the first significance but the second significance is negative so imagine your routine for example a diet or your routine you have a routine you have a diet and it's friday or saturday and you let yourself go that means you lose your routine you lose your discipline and you lose your order so to let yourself go is possible to relax and to enjoy and it's possible negative to really destroy your routine your good habits so it's very very important and in this case it's positive to enjoy and relax so let yourself go enjoy the other possibility that's very famous in this expression is to let your hair down okay so hair and down is the preposition so permit is to let and it's typical on friday also so during the week monday to friday you work and your hair is very um, normally your hair is up like your hair is professional your hair is tied and that's the significance your hair is up and on friday night you go to the restaurant you go to the disco and you relax you let your hair down so the significance is to enjoy and to relax okay very typical and very uh, common as well in conversation okay super that's a really good analysis of vocabulary one paragraph and you can see a lot of detail and now I think you understand that at the beginning of the class it's important to explain the concepts noun adjective article adverb modal verb preposition substantive it's very important at the beginning to explain the concept because during the class we see and we identify a lot of these concepts okay so that's the that's the principal reason why it's important okay so we can close this show you the video from it's very slow just to load sorry i'll press pause okay so yesterday we had a a piece from the video yesterday and also the day before we had two uh, sections of the video and today we will do another section okay and you can also hear my dog I think as well so we go to the last place of yesterday this was the conversation yesterday maybe you remember and we go to the end and today it's a new situation a completely new uh, scene and first I want you to try to understand and try to listen to the conversation first and after the conversation we can return to the analysis and the explanation of the vocabulary and the expressions okay so first now you try to listen to the audio and try to understand it's very very difficult very good example of local conversation particularly in Ireland but it is possible in England the same concept and the same expressions okay I hope you can hear it with the audio and I will keep the screen small because yesterday it was difficult with the connection to make it big. So I will press play and um, hopefully my dog, you can, he will stop a little but I will press play and hopefully you can hear. Okay, so it's the next, it's the next scene. Sorry, I'll wait, I'll wait for the dog. Okay, this was the end. Okay, you ready? Okay, super. That's a really good example of local conversation, particularly in Ireland. And it's even more difficult because they have the mask 
so the mouth is covered and it's even more difficult to understand the expressions okay so now probably you had a lot of problem to understand i expect you probably did not understand the majority of that but now i want to show you the script okay and the first question was is so this is the verb to be and bosco is the name of the man and the question was is bosco off and the preposition in relation to work is off so you are in work but you are off work means you are free you have a free day okay so the question is the, uh, the affirmative Bosco is off so Bosco has a free day Bosco is not working and the question is is he off so the man is asking the question this expression for the time being this is very typical in conversation and extremely common and basically it has the significance for now for this moment with no end so the coronavirus we have at the moment level five restrictions for the time being for now and we do it's possible to change in the future but for the time being has the significance of uh, now okay so is he off work for now and probably continued so that's the significance for the time being and the lady says no he's on his break so in relation to work the typical preposition for your break is on. I'm on my break, so you're in work, but you're on your break. So the typical preposition with break is on. Okay, that's important to remember. Then she has the question, why would he? So this is the conditional. He is the subject, be is the verb, and again, off is in relation to work. So why would he be off, okay? Well, subject, I just thought, so the verb is to think and the past is taught. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my notes here as well. One moment and I'll move this over here so you can see. Um, yeah, I'll have to move this. And I wanna continue with my vocabulary and my notes. So the verb is to think and the past is uh, I thought. Irregular, so it's irregular verb in the past. And here the question is, I is the subject and thought is the past simple, the verb present simple, past simple. With the case and all that. So this is another significance for etc and all that. Um, it's like saying etc in English. So it's very conversational and the significance really is etc. Okay, so I thought with the case in relation to corona, the corona case and etc and everything involved, everything associated with that. You subject linker you and him uh, working together so together is juntos okay so you and him working together juntos in espanol the next one is a modal verb so might is the modal verb and sorry i'll just move this again so um yes here we have the modal verb might remember might could and may are all similar with the significance of possibility you might, you could, you may. Remember, the next verb is the infinitive, but we eliminate two after the modal. So the modal and the next verb, we eliminate two. Here, the next verb is to be, but because it's a modal before, we eliminate two. A bit is a little, a bit of milk, a bit of chocolate, a bit of help, a bit of advice, a little, okay? Awkward. This vocabulary is very, very important, and it's an adjective, it's very common, basically the significance is uncomfortable so imagine you working you are working every day on friday night you go to the restaurant to relax with your friend so you go on friday night to relax with your friend but you find your manager is in the same restaurant so this situation is a little uncomfortable it's a little awkward and it's a very very common very famous expression and the translation here is in other languages I'm going to show you because it is a very very important word awkward in other languages you can see and um, i'm just going to translate this is a very good translator okay so there's the translation in bulgarian chinese dutch french german and uh, italian i don't know if that's correct no 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 let me change that again sorry so the spelling i think is incorrect awkward um i don't know why that's not working awkward is the word and 
I don't know why. It's like uncomfortable. Basically, the significance is uncomfortable. And it's very, very common in conversation. I don't think there's a translation. Oh, there we go. There's a better translation. Dutch, French, German, Italian. Embarrassing. Very similar in English. Embarrassing. It's very similar. Embarrassing, awkward, uncomfortable, in incommodal in Espanol, Romanian. Okay. <laughs> That's all the vocabulary. And here, the man suggests the situation is maybe uncomfortable um, because the person has the case of coronavirus. Okay. And then the lady says, awkward question. Not in the slightest. This is a very typical expression in conversation. So slight is a little. And for example, a headache. You have a slight headache. And remember, headache is like dolor in cabeza, pain in your head. So the headache is like a pain in your head. And you have a slight pain in your head is a little. Okay. And the expression is not in the slightest. So it means even like absolutely not the significance is absolutely not it's emphasis for no okay so are you tired no 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 not in the slightest not even a little i'm completely fine so absolutely not tired so not in the slightest is emphasis for the negative so awkward uncomfortable no absolutely not completely not not in the slightest very typical in conversation and lo local and formal and movies and friends and family very very normal I'm not taking sides. So sides, one side, this side, the other side. And to take sides, typical in an argument or a discussion, is to support one person ahead of another person. So to take a side is to support one person in a discussion or an argument. And the lady says, I am not taking sides in the argument. I'm independent. I'm neutral. Okay. How did you, so this is the question. How is possible with the question? Did you, in the past, even is emphasis, in Espanol, incluso, and it's emphasis. So how did you hear about it? It is the topic or the the rumor or the case. So how did you hear about the story, the topic? Uh, Bob and Huey, so two names. One man is Bob for Robert. It's a name for Robert. And another man is Huey. So they're typical names in Ireland. We're talking. So that's the past continuous. The verb is to talk. And the past continuous, we're talking preposition about pronoun it so the significance of it again is the case or the situation or the rumor so they elios they were talking about the rumor in the pig okay pig is the animal but the name of the pub in the telenovela is the pig so that's a little more difficult so the pig is the animal cerdo in espanol but the name of the pub or the bar is the pig and the preposition we use for the pub is in the pub. Okay, so they, there's the past continuous preposition, pronoun, and the preposition again in the pig. Okay, can they not keep their mouth shut for five minutes? So can is the modal and related to ability. And in this position, it's the inversion. So it's the question. So the affirmative, they can, ability, affirmative, and the question, can they? Okay, so it's a question negative the next verb is to keep and remember the rule after the modal the next verb is the infinitive but we eliminate two so it's a question in the negative can they not keep their is possession pronoun mouth is boca in espanol so for example my mouth your mouth his mouth her mouth possession our mouth their mouths okay so it's plural and it's possession Shut is in Espanol calle, in Espanol callate is the expression. So shut is like cerrar in Espanol. So to shut the door, to shut the window, uh, it's like to close. The significance is to close, cerrar, okay, shut. And with the mouth, to shut the mouth is to close the mouth, okay? And the question is, is it not possible? Do they not have the ability to close the mouth for five minutes Bosco does not so it's the negative the negative in the present and normally in the negative we use the verb do and here does not want people knowing okay and then the ma the man enters the room Bosco enters the room and the expression he says my ears are burning so the verb to burn is related to fire when the fire is burning quemar in Espanol to burn and the expression is my ears are burning 
this is a famous expression when you have the sensation you have the feeling people are speaking about you so when people are talking about you you have the sensation or the instinct your ears are burning that's the famous expression and it's perfect for this case because the man enters and he has suspicion he believes that the people are speaking about him his ears are burning it's metaphor okay and then the next expression he says we are just asking after you so this is very very interesting okay so first ya yeah is informal it should be we are asking after you and the expression to ask after somebody is very famous and the significance is you're asking how they are so if I ask after you I am in, I am curious about your situation I hope you are okay I send you my best wishes I am asking after you that's a very very normal expression in conversation okay so the expression is to ask after somebody and the significance is to ask how they are so I am asking after my friend I am curious that he is okay I hope that he is okay that's the famous expression so here um, it's the present continuous subject we okay just is like only so little emphasis only just asking is the gerund so it's the present continuous we are asking after you so we're inquiring about you we're curious about you we hope you are well okay there's two possibilities asking after someone or to ask for someone and it's the same significance that you are curious about their situation and you hope they are well okay so that I'm asking for you I was asking for your friend I'm curious about the situation and I hope that they are well okay me he means your arm so to mean is significado but in Espanol is osea um, in the subject he so I you he means and his significance and then here we have the question at the end and this is very typical in English to have a little question at the end for example you are happy affirmative you are happy aren't you that category is called tag questions okay it's very common in conversation all the time in local situations for example it is a beautiful day isn't it that category is very important the category is tag questions okay so here I'm gonna write just for you to remember later tag questions um, and this is a typical tag question don't you so he means your arm don't you so it's a question ah yeah yeah your arm okay and I think we're nearly finished and um, you are talking about the case so it's the present continuous subject are talking preposition the case aren't you so this is the same concept the question so it's a tag question so you're talking about the case aren't you I was just checking so it's the past continuous I was checking and just is like only I was only checking as to is like in relation to okay so the significance really is in relation to how you were doing so it's the same as synonym I was asking uh, after you I was asking how you were doing the past continuous you were doing okay so everyone knows about it so subject everyone verb knows the infinitive is to know and the third person is with the s i know you know he knows everyone everybody third person knows with the s okay about it it is the object and in this case it's the substitution for the case or the story or the rumor this is very important in english and again do they another question at the end of the sentence and sometimes this is very problematic for people when they try to understand English because at the end of the sentence we have a lot of questions or tag questions so that is important okay no not at all so the significance again of not at all is completely no absolutely no you remember not in the slightest not in the slightest has the same significance more or less as not at all and the significance is completely no absolutely no okay it was just Bob and Huey so subject normally it's necessary in English always to have a subject verb to be in the past simple to be was so it was just Bob and Huey mouthing off this is a phrasal verb very informal phrasal verb the mouth is the substantive but there is a verb to mouth okay and um, 
it's possible informal very informal the verb to mouth is when somebody is speaking maybe very negative about another person or like rumors or chisme in Espanol so when the person is speaking very negative about another person it's possible informal to say he or she is mouthing and the preposition off okay because you're in you're on and off because it's away from you <clears throat> okay so the phrasal verb is to mouth off and it's negative the significance is to criticize or to talk about another person in a negative way that's famous and typical in conversation informal okay so they were uh, mouthing off to Bella preposition to okay they were talking rubbish they were gossiping to preposition to Bella no not directly to me so not is usually with the verb remember the difference yesterday between not and no no is for the substantive no time no energy no food no money not is for the verb and the adjective not happy not tired not hungry adjective and the verb I do not and here it's connected to the verb mouthing or speaking or gossiping so not directly this is the adverb connected to the verb mouthing the verb directly to me okay you is the subject say is the verb the simple you say the past is said they is the next subject told the verb is to tell in the present I tell you future I will tell past irregular I told you so the difference between say and tell is generally very important say normally it's necessary to preposition to I say to you I say to him I say to her so say it's normally necessary preposition to with the next person but tell is more direct I tell you I tell him and it's not necessary to so tell we eliminate to and say it's necessary to and here tell you it's eliminating to to is not necessary okay no I said so subject past simple past continuous they were talking past continuous about it the topic or the subject preposition in because it's the name of the pub in the pub in the pig in the bar with Cass and he subject told past simple me it's not necessary to okay um, and I think that's almost finished and then finally the last expression is very interesting and very funny so the verb is to whisper and to whisper is when you speak very very uh, softly very low so for example in school with my friend I whisper so that's the verb to whisper and the substantive is a whisper but the expression is Chinese whispers and it's a game it's a famous game with a group you have 10 people in a circle one person begins with the expression and they whisper to the next person and the next person takes the expression and continues to whisper and at the end the story or the word is completely different so this is a very famous expression Chinese whispers is when people speak and the story is completely changed okay similar to gossiping okay that's very good analysis or explanation of a typical local conversation and now I want to play the video again with the script here okay and you can try to understand again the script and the uh, conversation and I'll just return to the beginning so this was the end and then um, good luck so try to understand and I hope you can hear perfectly and then after we will return again so you're ready I'll just close my window and good luck again <coughs>
okay well done so I hope with the explanation it was a little bit better I hope that you can understand better the second time and I will put the link for the video in the comment section of the class I will put the material from the class in the comment section also and I hope you can check yourself again and um, very good class so that's again the structure introduction of the grammar at the beginning analysis of the article with the vocabulary and the grammar and an analysis of the video with the expressions and conversation yes I have a list of phrases verbs and idioms but I think for today that is enough and in the chat no nobody has connected on zoom so nobody wants to practice and nobody wants to speak remember this is a possibility if you want to participate in the class you can connect with zoom and we can practice for a few minutes if you just want to, to practice speaking that's a possibility okay so thank you very much and um, again everything is free I'm very very happy to teach for free at the moment if you want to support me a little this would be a very very big help for me and I would be very grateful and um, especially in the future I might need your support in the future of maybe one euro or two euro it's possible with Bizoom in Spain that's the telephone number or with your phone with PayPal that's the possibility with your phone you can scan your phone and it can direct you to a donation for maybe one or two euro only optional only if you want but in the future it will be very good help for me and that's the website as well okay so super great work thank you very much uh, happy Valentine's weekend and red is the appropriate color this weekend I have to tomorrow try to find more red to wear for Valentine's weekend and I hope that you have a very good day today if you have any questions please uh, let me know and enjoy the rest of your day and talk to you soon bye bye